website that you incorporate old time movie posters into things. Uh, I've even you've even started doing it with book covers and things like that. Uh, what what else do you incorporate? How do you even incorporate that? Well, in art school, I was taught to believe that form follows function. So different art projects require different influences from different inspirations. With Chicken Dance, I incorporated all things Elvis Presley. I think it was safe to say that the fat Vegas Elvis was more fun than the old, young, strapping Elvis. I did extensive research on old Elvis concert posters, which I tried to mimic closely in the book. I even tried to emulate a silkscreen effect. The dance spread in the middle of the book incorporates lots of famous dance steps that you see in movies. There's dirty dancing, Pulp Fiction, there's even uh, a scene where the chickens are voguing. The back of the book looks like an actual Elvis poultry album complete with song list, and I actually lifted that image off of an actual Elvis album. I got so into the project that I even made album covers for the author and myself for the bio. I just thought it provided a nice additional touch to the whole feel of the book. Next year I'm coming out with a picture book from Disney Hyperion written by Mac Barnett called Oh No. In that book, I was just completely influenced by old Japanese monster movies from the 1960s and 70s. At one point, I was trying to convince Disney Hyperion to let me do Japanese subtitles for all the text, and I think that just got a little too weird for them. You can also see some of my influence in comic books in some of the spreads. Even the book jacket has a nice monster movie poster feel to it. Disney Hyperion was even nice enough to let me make an actual movie poster, so if you take off the jacket and flip it over, the jacket itself turns into a wall poster that a kid can hang on his wall. Next year, Little Brown's coming out with a middle grade chapter book that I illustrated called The Adventures of Nanny Piggins. And that book just incorporates all kinds of nostalgia and pop culture. There's a page in there that some people will recognize as a direct relation to a classic Norman Rockwell painting. Since it's a book about a nanny, there's also several references to the sound of music. In one scene, there's even a rival nanny that walks around with a guitar case. And in the beginning of the book, there's a hilarious scene where Nanny Piggins gets introduced to the family and she's out in the rain. And that scene was just lifted from the classic scene in The Exorcist, which clearly has no relation to the book whatsoever. I think these influences are greatly inspired by my passion for movies. And also, one of the things we did in art school to study composition and framing was to watch old Alfred Hitchcock movies. And that's just a quick glimpse on some of my influences on the books. Cool. So I live in New York, and you live in L.A., and I might move to L.A., so sell me on it. Sell me on L.A. California is a great place, and I can only scratch the surface. Where do I begin? We've got the L.A. Dodgers, the Los Angeles Angels of Anaheim, or something like that, the L.A. Lakers, the L.A. Clippers, the Mighty Ducks of Anaheim, the L.A. Kings, the L.A. Galaxy. Uh, sorry, no football team. The Man Chinese Theater, the Chinese Man Theater, Hollywood and Vine, this old thing, the Sunset Strip, the fancy place pretentious rich people shop at, the Santa Monica Pier, Venice Beach, the LA County Fair, the happiest place on earth, Universal Studios, Knott's Berry Farm, SeaWorld, which is technically San Diego but close enough, Medieval Times, can you believe this is our governor? We have the best car chases in the country, hands down. You're about 20 minutes away from everything if there isn't traffic. You're a stone's throw away from the beach, a hop, skip, and a jump away from the mountains. Did I mention we wear shorts in the winter? A four and a half hour drive from Vegas. There's Mexican food everywhere, both good and bad. Ever have an In-N-Out burger? Looking for some culture? The Griffith Observatory, the Natural History Museum, the Huntington Library, something called BlizzCon, the Tournament of Roses Parade, the famous Rose Bowl Swap Meet, the J. Paul Getty Museum, the L.A. County Museum of Art, the Long Beach Aquarium, the L.A. Times Festival of Books, and last but not least, the San Diego Comic Con. I'm sorry. All I talk about in and out burger got me hungry. Please continue with the energy. Hmm. Well, I don't look good one. Well, maybe it is. I'm sorry. Um, final question. Who are your influences, Lenny? I have far too many influences to mention, but on the top of my head there's J. Otto Siebold, John Sheska, Richard Scarry, Lane Smith, William Joyce, David Shannon, Mark Teague, Neil Gaiman, 
Chris Ware, Star Wars, Indiana Jones, the video games of Tim Schafer, the films of Pixar, David Sedaris, Amy Sedaris, old vintage cartoons, Stephen Colbert, The Daily Show, N.C. Wyeth, J.C. Liondecker, Egon Schiele, of course there's The Beatles, Michael Chabon, This American Life, the films of the Coen Brothers, Dave Brubeck, Japanese monster movies, Japanese manga, the work of Jean-Pierre Jeunet, and Chip Kidd. Oh, and let's not forget to mention my family. All right, well, that was just awesome. Uh, thank you, Dan, for doing all that. Thanks to the watching public for watching. And I really appreciate it. This was fabulous. Thanks so much for doing it. Thanks again, Betsy. This was a fun interview. Bye. You're still here? Get back to work. <laughs>